So this is a Excel Academy um, discussion on how to use Excel a little bit more like a programming language. People don't necessarily recognize this, but Excel is probably the most widely used programming language. And yet some of the things that are sort of foundational in computer programming, like the ability to declare variables, exist in Excel, but aren't always recognized or used by folks in a way that I think is potentially an oversight and they can actually make writing formulas a heck of a lot easier. And so we're going to kind of talk about that and in terms of where this falls in the overall sort of discussion of Excel skills. I've got this sort of linked as part of um, Excel 104 uh, related to data set merging. And the reason is that um, being able to declare cells, um, columns of data, and even full tables um, and, and give them specialized names will make writing formulas easier, particularly writing that VLOOKUP formula. It gets a lot easier when you when you have this foundation. So we'll kind of illustrate what that'll look like um, a little bit later on. But I want to begin just with, with a more basic um, sort of discussion. So um, this is a very simple version of a report that I helped um, kind of refine and, and prepare for um, a nonprofit organization um, that had a wide variety of grants. Um, I had to report on those grants every quarter. Um, they were sort of similar and sort of had, um, they were all sort of part of the same Excel workbook, but I kept finding that they were running into, that they were making the same kind of mistakes time and time again each quarter when they were submitting. And that is that they had like 20 different worksheets and they had to keep updating like the quarter and the person who was like the point person on that grant for that quarter and all that was changing and they were always missing in the update process just because it was too much to look at. And so I recognized pretty quickly that that's an easy thing to fix. And so what I did is I said, well, let's create a um, values sheet. Um, and in that, let's have the quarter, because that's something that changes regularly, but we want to be consistent across all these sheets and a submitting person, right? Something that changes, but we want to be consistent across all these sheets. And so if I just do quarter one here, um, and I do my no name, type that in. And then over here, rather than typing, you know, quarter one and Brian Erlocker and having to update that every single time, I can just make a reference to those cells that already exist. And so I can start by hitting equal to start a formula. I can click over to the values tab. Um, and if you look up in the Excel formula bar, it now has equal values exclamation point because Excel recognizes that I've shifted to a new worksheet, wants to keep track of that. And when I select B1, uh, now it's values exclamation point B1, and I can hit enter. And that value is now included here. I can drag that down and grab what's in B2 um, from that sheet. And if I update on that sheet for quarter two, it will update on my report as well. And it will update for all the reports that I've linked to that cell. And so that's one way to kind of hold certain values in reserve that you can call easily later um, and, and write a way to, to call them. But I think there's actually an easier way to, to do this using um, this trick that people don't necessarily know about. Um, and so I'm going to select my value that I want to sort of have populated across all the reports. Um, when I select it, the value shows up here in the formula bar because it's an actual value, not a formula. And then over here, I've got this B1, which is telling me that that's where this is located in my sheet. But I can actually give that a different name above and beyond B1. B1 will still work, but I can tell Excel, I actually want this, this particular value, I want to have its own um, special name. And so I'm going to click in there and I'm going to call this quarter and hit enter. And I'm going to call this one B2. Um, person. Now, when I go back over to my report, I could access that with the values sheet exclamation point B1, or I can just type in equals. And as I start typing, typing quarter, quarter pops up in my sort of formula sort of recommendations bar. Excel knows that I've declared something called quarter, and I can grab that. I can say, yep, that's what I wanted, Excel. Give me that. And I hit enter and it gives me a quarter two. And here I can type submitting person, choose that, enter, and it gave me the submitting person. And it's still referencing these cells. So if I change this to Q3, Q3 changes over here. Well, essentially what I've done is I've said to Excel, 
this value, give it a name that's intuitive and easy to remember so that I can write that in my formulas without having to remember like what worksheet something's on and what are the cell ranges. And not having to worry about cell ranges and worksheets makes writing formulas a lot easier, particularly if you're working with things that are more intuitive in terms of names. So we don't have to do this just with um, cell values and, and single cells, although it, it's pretty handy. Um, sometimes I will um, sort of add into my formulas 3.141159 for pi and tell Excel, yeah, that's pi. And so anytime I want to write pi in an equation, instead of typing out 3.14159, I might type out pi. And I can multiply it by pi, and I will reference that cell and get the right value. Um, but I can do it for columns as well. And so if I have my population column here, I think this is the data that we compiled as part of the class from the CIA World Factbook, um, and population is expressed in, I believe, millions. I can select that entire column of data, and I can give that entire column a name. And now I can very quickly write some formulas to aggregate that. So I can figure out what the sum of population is. There it is. I started typing it. It found it. It's like this is a whole column of data. Are you going to throw that in your sum formula? I am. And it even goes and shows me, yep, you grabbed this chunk of data. I just saw my population. I can do averages. I mean, the population again. Sure enough, it picks that up. And I don't have to remember what column it is. I don't have to remember how far down it goes. I don't have to guess with my, my cell references. Once I've labeled it, I can call it easily. And that ends up being helpful when you're writing um, formulas on other worksheets. <laughs> it helps when you're writing formulas that are sort of way at the end of your worksheet. You don't have to scroll back through. Remember, is it column D or column C? Um, let's say minimum. I spelled it wrong. There we go. User error, not Excel error. Um, so that's kind of handy. Um, another thing I'll, I'll maybe point out about this um, is that these formulas are, um, or the, these ranges are fixed ranges. And what that means is that oftentimes when I um, write a formula, so let's do sum and I'll select it population all the way down to get my, my values. Oh, Excel recognized that that's population, so it relabeled it for me. Um, I'm going to give it something slightly different. Um, let's do one less than population. OK. Now Excel treats it like it's cell ranges because it doesn't recognize it. Um, if I do my summation that way and select the values um, D3 through D180, and I drag my formulas down, what ends up happening is that it adjusts the range. So as I drag it down to the next cell, it drags that range down as well. So now I'm not just skipping the first, I'm skipping the second. And here I'm skipping not just you know the first, the second, I've skipped a bunch. And so with a non-fixed cell range, as you drag and copy, that cell range moves. When you use a declared um, cell range with a, like our population, population, and I drag it down, it remains the exact same cell range no matter what. Now, there's a way to do that with, um, our cell ranges here, um, we can lock them in place and tell Excel, I don't want you to update those when I drag. And I can do that with dollar signs. And so a dollar sign in front of the D will say, as you drag this way or this way, don't adjust the columns. Um, this one will say, as you drag up or down, don't adjust the rows. And I can fix that value. Um, but I also probably want to fix my other value as well, so that as I'm dragging to the right or to the left, I'm not updating columns. As I'm dragging up or down, I'm not updating rows. And once I've added those dollar values and fixed those cell references, those will behave 
the way my population was doing before, where it's the same value range every single time. Okay, so why is that important? Why is that something that we need to, to pay attention to and it's gonna be helpful for us? Well, in writing our VLOOKUP formula to be able to merge data from one uh, table into another table, um, we're going to want to make reference to a fixed cell range. And so I'm actually going to go to my Freedom House table um, over here, which has a couple of different variables. Um, you know, I deleted out my extra variables I was going to use. You know, we'll just use it anyway. I'm going to pretend like I didn't actually already include this one. Deleted it out. Okay, I want to put that one back. Um, Okay, so I've got this Freedom House score, which is essentially how democratic or non-democratic countries are. I've got a matching code over here, and I want to use this table and match information in to this table, um, matching up along these same country codes. And so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a VLOOKUP formula, VLOOKUP, in which it asks me, what value are you looking up? I'm going to look up this particular value because I'm interested in this row and finding information that goes and corresponds to this row. And then I hit comma to go to the next thing that it asked me to sort of, it's interested in. It says, what's the table that you're looking for? And so for the table, I'm gonna click over to Freedom House. And I'm gonna say, I need this whole table. And it gives me that information, but it's this big long string, right? It's that, you know, sheet reference. It's the, um, the start of that, that cell range and the end of that cell range. That's a lot to kind of type out. Um, I'm going to hit comma because it's going to ask me for another piece of information about this table. It's going to ask me, what column do you want? And so the first column, it would be one is here. This is two. This is three. I want the fourth column. So I'm going to hit four. And I hit comma again to go to that last piece. And then Excel says, do you want us to guess and try and figure out how things match up? Or do you want to like actually look and make sure they match up perfectly? Um, I always want to make sure I have them matching up perfectly. I want false. Give me an exact match. Don't try to get fun and creative Excel with your guessing. Okay, so I've written my formula. I close it out with a, a parenthesis and I hit enter and I get the value 27 for Afghanistan, which when I flip back to my table, I think works. Um, Afghanistan, yeah, 27. So the VLOOKUP formula checked this cell. It said, we're looking for 700. We're gonna look for 700 in this first row or this first column. It found it with Afghanistan. I said, go find me the fourth column of information in this row, which is 27. And then it returns that value. And that can work. That, that formula does work. Um, but it's kind of clunky to write. Um, and I can make that a, quite a bit easier. The other thing that um, is problematic about that is that if I drag it down, um, my range starts moving. I click here, if I click over here, uh, I'm not able to see the table. Um, but if I click here, I find that my range is actually moved down. So now I'm no longer looking for those first couple rows. Um, so I actually need to remember to fix my table here and tell it dollar A2, lock that in place, dollar D, 211, lock that in place. So that when I drag it down, it actually continues to look at that exact same table. Again, I find myself frequently <laughs> um, guessing and double checking and trying to figure out where the heck those tables are at, um, constantly forgetting to put in dollar signs and lock my ranges. When there's a much easier way, I can just pick up this entire table as it is, and I'm gonna give it a name. FH, Freedom House. That's my table. Now when I come back over here and I have to write my VLOOKUP formula, I can write it a much simpler way. I can write it as equal VLOOKUP. See to open, start the formula. It says, what value do you want to look up? I want to look up this value because I'm trying to match for this row. Hit my comma. It says, where do you want to look that up? What's the table that you're looking for? The table's Freedom House, FH. I've declared that. And if I just hit type FH, I'm done. I don't have to worry about fixing ranges. It's a fixed range. I don't have to worry about switching between sheets. I've already referenced it. Um, it's called Freedom House. Excel knows where to go to get that data. Um, I can tell it I'm looking for the fourth column. 
comma again, and I can tell if I want exact match, false. I can close my formula up and it will give me the right value. Um, and that formula ends up being, I think, a lot easier to write um, and a lot more intuitive um, because I'm not working with cell references and other worksheets I can't see. I'm working with something that makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to grab data from that Freedom House table, FH, Freedom House, that's where I'm going. So uh, again, I think that this ability to define cell ranges makes writing formulas massively easier um, because you can do things that are intuitive rather than trying to remember cell ranges. Um, but again, it's something that folks who have programming background probably sort of intuit that that's a really useful thing. Um, but for most Excel users, it's not something that's on their radar, but I really think it should be. And I hope that um, changes the way that you actually use Excel uh, for a whole variety of tasks.